Hey, what's going on everyone? So after I posted that video of uh, getting the Cummins to run for the first time, a couple people commented and told me that they thought maybe the timing was off on it because of the way it was running. And um, I kind of realized that's probably true because this is the first time I did it. I did it um, with the chart from the wrong pump. And so I've got the timing cover off and everything. And basically I'm gonna run through real quick uh, the proper way, the quickest way to um, set what you want the pump to be at for uh, timing. Uh, basically what you do is you rotate the crankshaft until you're at um, top dead center. That's indicated by the uh, circle mark here being in between the two dots there and that white line lining up. And uh, the next thing you want to make sure of is that it's the compression stroke. And the way you do that is check the um, the push rods underneath the rockers. If you can tell that uh, you know there's no pressure on the valves, that means this is your compression stroke. It means all the valves are up. And uh, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and pull off your number one injection line and install your diverter valve um, dial indicator holder. And then you're gonna to wanna to pop the dial indicator in there with a couple of extensions on it to make sure that it never bottoms out. And uh, the next step is basically to rotate the engine counterclockwise. And if you're gonna do that from the flywheel like I am, you need to rotate the wrench clockwise. So I'm gonna have my assistant go ahead and do that real quick while we watch the timing marks on the crankshaft here. And you'll see they start to rotate counterclockwise. Go ahead. Not other way, bro. Up, right? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Keep going. And so the next thing we're gonna look for is uh, you're gonna be watching the dial indicator and it's gonna be dropping as you rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise. And you're gonna watch the dial indicator to um, you basically watch the needle drop until it stops dropping. And once it stops dropping, that's when you stop rotating the engine. Getting close. Good. This will probably be the last rotation, I think. It's probably going to land on the zero because I have already done this. Keep going. A little bit more, I think. Yeah, that should be about it. A little bit more just to make sure, but I think that's where we're supposed to be. Yeah, so see the needles stop moving. Okay, go ahead and stop. And basically all we do now is um, zero out your dial indicator, mine's already zeroed out. Yours will probably be sitting something like, you know, it could be anywhere depending on how you have it. But what you wanna do is just zero it out and then turn the wrench to the opposite setting and rotate the flywheel uh, counterclockwise, which will rotate the engine clockwise. And you're gonna rotate it while watching the dial indicator. That's why it's really important you have a helper so we're gonna watch the dial indicator and we're gonna watch it rotate three full revolutions because we want to set our timing at 24 degrees. So the chart for our P-pump calls for a setting of 0 0.3150. So we're gonna watch this needle rotate three full times and then once it gets to the zero the third time, we're gonna watch it rotate to the 10 and then to the 15 mark, and that'll be 0 0.3150, which will put us at 24 degrees timing. So go ahead and start rotating it. One. Two. Three, slow down, you're real close, real close. Almost there, perfect. And that's gonna be exactly where we need to be, which is 24 degrees of timing. And all right, so since mine is already set to the correct timing, um, I can't
can't really show you exactly how this goes, but I'm gonna explain it. We're at 0 0.3150 on our dial indicator, and ordinarily, when you come down to your timing marks here, when you're set to 0 0.3150, uh, at least on mine, when it was at that, these were actually forward a bit too far. So what it says to do in the next step is loosen the bolts that hold the adjustable gear on and remove the locating bolt that is right there, the small guy. And then you rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise again until the timing marks line up perfectly and then you go ahead and tighten these bolts back down on your adjustable pump gear and you will have in my case 24 degrees of timing and um, you know just reference your timing chart for your specific pump to figure out for your setup and that's basically all there is to it if you have any questions let me know in the comments all right so it seems like um changing the timing on the p-pump didn't changed the idle a whole lot so I went ahead and started adjusting the idle screw on the p-pump and it sounds a lot better I'm gonna be looking for your guys's opinion on if you think it sounds about right I haven't been able to get a solid signal out of my tachometer yet that's driven off the alternator so um, kind of just going by ear right now so check it out mm -hmm. 